The Tudor period was an incredibly brutal time in England, when there were scores of executions and public punishments brought about to bring the public into line. The most famous Tudor king, Henry VIII, ordered the executions of over 70,000 people during his time on the throne, and other monarchs such as Bloody Mary I continued the bloodshed. One aspect of the legal system within Tudor England was that torture was used to get a confession for a crime, or to get more information about what had happened in a crime. One of the most famous uses of torture used during the period was during the reign of Elizabeth I, who needed to extract information from conspirators who plotted to overthrow and kill her. Often torture was administered by those in charge of fortifications, such as the constable of the Tower of London. But it could be incredibly brutal, and there were a number of different devices and methods used during the Tudor period. So join us today as we look at 10 horrific Tudor torture devices and methods, and remember to support our channel. Please make sure to subscribe. The most infamous torture device of them all is the rack. Prominently used at the Tower of London, the rack was not used as often as most people believed during the Tudor times. It was used as a way of extracting information from a high-profile prisoner, and it was incredibly feared. A prisoner would have their arms and legs fastened by ropes to the device at each end, and then with every turn of the rack, their limbs would stretch, and the point of the rack was to stretch someone. Limbs would come out of their sockets, arms would snap and break, and muscles would tear. It was so dangerous that there were accounts of people being killed on the rack, as their ordeal was so severe. The sight of the device was often believed to have been enough to get someone to give over information. Brutally, there is an account of a woman being tortured on the rack, Anne Askew, who during the reign of Henry VIII was racked so severely that she could not stand and walk. She was even carried to her execution when she was later burned at the stake. It was very savage and brutal, and the rack was the most famous torture device used. Invented during the reign of King Henry VIII by the Lieutenant of the Tower of London, Sir Leonard Scavington, the scavenger's daughter was a device used in opposition to the rack. The rack intended to stretch, but the scavenger's daughter intended to compress. It was an A-frame shaped with a hole for the head at the top of the A. The hands were then held in the middle, and the legs at the lower end. When the frame was folded, it would swing the head down, and force the knees up in a sitting position locking the body of the prisoner into a compressed position. It would cause the nose and ears to bleed, and was very painful. It was used a number of times during the Tudor period for different criminals, and was a brutal form of torture, which was devised to inflict as much pain as possible. Thumb screws were a torture device which were used for centuries in England and other countries. They were a vice in which someone's finger would be placed into, and then crushing bars attached to the thumb screw, which would press down and crush the fingers. They also had metal sharp points attached, which would puncture the fingers, and also rip open the flesh. Thumb screws were often used as a first form of torture, to get someone to confess, but they were also used in conjunction with other devices, such as the rack. They were incredibly painful, and could maim someone for life. Little Ease was a small and tiny cell found inside the Tower of London. It was practically a cupboard, which was incredibly cramped and compact, and it was so tiny that someone could not sit, and was forced to crouch in it for days on end. This would have been incredibly painful and arduous, being fixed in one position for days. Today the location of Little Ease is not known, and it's assumed to be in the basement of the White Tower. The prisoner inside here would not have any room to move, and it would serve as a brutal form of psychological torture, playing on the mind of the prisoner. Little Ease was used alongside other torches at the tower, and prisoners were thrown in there after suffering horrendous pains on torture devices such as a rack, but being locked in a small cell with no room to move was enough to break anyone. Flaying typically was a method of execution, where someone could be killed by a number of painful cuts onto someone's body. By cutting someone and wounding them, this was used in torture within the Tudor period. It was first used on the rack, 
and someone could be wounded whilst they were tied to the device initially, as it was regarded as a lesser torture than using the infamous device which would turn. The ducking stool was used for punishment for witches and witchcraft, and a victim would be tied to a chair, which was held over a pond or river, or even a barrel of water. The victim would be lowered into the water until they were completely submerged, and would then be raised if the victim was about to lose consciousness. This was seen as a method of torture, as just before death, someone would be brought out of the water, and they were given a chance to confess their crimes. People even had fruit and gags stuffed into their mouths and noses, to make sure they didn't get a good breath, and this could sometimes lead to drowning. It was a risky torture method, intended to bring about a confession. The manacles were a form of torture which suspended a prisoner from his or her wrists in the air. They would be secured in the form of an iron handcuff around a prisoner's wrists, and they were then suspended in the air. Jesuit priest John Gerard was tortured inside the Tower of London, using the manacles, and he wrote, Then they put my wrists into iron gauntlets, and ordered me to climb two or three wicker steps. My arms were then lifted up, and an iron bar was passed through the rings of one gauntlet, then through the staple and rings of the second gauntlet. This done, they fastened the bar with a pin, to prevent it slipping, and then, removing the wicker steps, they left me hanging by my hands and arms, fastened above my head. It was very painful, and would lead to someone sometimes having their shoulders dislocated, and their ligaments tearing. Psychological torture differed from physical torture. It targeted the brain and mental stability of a prisoner, and was different from devices such as the thumbscrews, brought to bring about sheer pain from parts of the body. Psychological torture could occur in the form of someone being locked up for a long time, being deprived of food, and also their freedom and luxuries. The Tower of London for many during the Tudor times was linked to psychological torture. For example, Margaret Pole, the Countess of Salisbury, was tortured with her possible execution for years, being held in the tower in a basic and small cell. Also, as mentioned, cells such as Little Ease were used for this, but the psychological torment often was more severe than physical pain for many prisoners. Hanging in chains was often a brutal and barbaric ordeal, which was linked to public humiliation and shaming of an individual. But it was also an execution method used on people, such as Robert Ask, the leader of the Pilgrimage of Grace. It was a brutal ordeal for someone to witness, and someone could be suspended by their arms in chains, and would be left to the elements. One of the most shocking forms of torture used the most definitely resulted in the death of an individual was a device known as a gibbet. Gibbeting someone was done sometimes after death to display the remains of a criminal, but it was used for hundreds of years. The point of this was to suspend someone in the air and display them for being a criminal, but it acted as a form of torture if someone was gibbeted alive. They would be left in the air for days, weeks and months until they died and succumbed to their fate. They would be starving to death, and would be left to succumb to the elements, and most die from dehydration, exhaustion, and exposure. Thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe, and once again, thank you so much for watching.